We've all played LEGO Star Wars in some way, shape or form, if you haven't corrected that mistake. But have you played the DS version? It's fully 3D, completely different from the console editions, and even has free roam multiplayer maps. So why wasn't it such a massive success? Well, you see, there's one incy wincy little tiny problem. The game is literally impossible, at least if you want to 100% it anyway. And even if you don't, the game barely functions as it is. You thought Fallout 76 was bad. <laughs> at least that got fixed later on. <laughs> Now, who in their right mind would play this willingly in 2024 instead of playing literally anything else? Hi everyone, Gavin here and I'm the Muppet who had this game growing up. Ah, uh, see, I got you. You thought I was going to say me, didn't you? Look, even I ain't that sad. Uh, cut that. Cut that. So LEGO Star Wars 2 for the Nintendo DS is a port of LEGO Star Wars 2 and it's, um... So imagine trying to build a LEGO Death Star out of actual LEGO while blindfolded and also wearing oven mitts. It's a chaotic struggle with questionable results and a high chance of accidentally destroying your sanity. I mean, my sanity was already destroyed years ago, but that's not the point here. That is LEGO Star Wars 2DS in a nutshell, a game filled with questionable decisions which resulted in a buggy, rushed mess. By the way, who destroyed my sanity? I bet it was Boba Fett. Take that, Boba Fett. This tin can is doing better than you. Okay. Anyway, so now you're probably wondering about, you know, the patch. Well, this is where we get to the really interesting part. Sorry about earlier. I went a bit crazy. Anyway, indeed, Ben, I found the patch version through discussions online saying about how rare it was. Traveller's Tales confirmed they had to send out a revised version with all the patches and stuff, but no one's made videos about it or clips, or even just anything, no documentation or anything, which is really weird. I decided to search for it in my own time, and I finally found a patch version from a seller. He was selling it with two other games. Of course, I didn't want these games, I just wanted the rare patched version, so I, I, I told him, do you know that you have a rare patch version on your hands here? And he was like, what? You what? He really didn't know that he had a rare patch version on his hands. And I showed him a couple of clips and I was like, my version had none of those bugs. And he was like, thank you for your honesty. Would you like it for £11? And I was like, yeah, £11, gah. So I've ordered it and it's on its way. I will be making a video about it, however, but it won't be for a very long time because me and another YouTuber, Shekabor, links will probably be in the description. We are making a massive collab together and that is currently the top priority. Don't expect this video anytime soon, but I will absolutely be making a video of this once this collab stuff has been sorted which will probably won't be for a, well, another good couple of years i'll keep you posted though i will definitely keep you posted because i'm really excited to finally show you all this mysterious lego star wars 2ds patched version well it's super rare outside oh my day well it's super rare outside the states anyway but i'm getting a bit ahead of myself practically nothing is known about it online it seems all that we know so far is that the game was so terrible that traveler's tales had to re-release the game yes as a physical cartridge to fix most of the issues apparently according to brickopedia yes we had to go to fandom we're in this deep they were going to re-release the game with the patch in all all regions and that each region had different bugs and glitches apparently yet it seems like only in the US of A did they actually get the patched version so the rest of us just got the standard potato version and even in the states the patched version is not as common as the potato version for a game that cost seemingly roughly about $63 in today's money man that is rough the way that you can tell if it's the patch version as far as we're aware is first check the front of the case and or cartridge to make Make sure it is indeed the US version, obviously. Then look at the back of the cartridge and in the middle of the version number it should have an N followed by 0 or 1. N0 means it's the first version as most games didn't ship with any extra updates. <laughs> so you can almost imagine this as version no as in no additional updates. Then any with N1 are indeed a patched version. The most convincing evidence I could find so far was by doing a bunch of random searching and eventually I stumbled across this cartridge dumping info site which has two separate files for the OG and the patched version of the US copy of the game although one is unverified so obviously take this with a grain of salt now this is the part of the video where I tell you I found it in some really dodgy dark alleyway with some guy trying to sell me other stuff but wait what it, it's just there on the US eBay like what 
Well, yeah, as it turns out, there are indeed plenty of copies on the US version of eBay. In fact, I managed to find six copies of the N1 version at $10 each, which is a more than affordable price for most people. There's even a Lost Media Wiki post about this, and the user said that potentially the Australian version may indeed have the patched version. However, I did a bit of digging into the Australian eBay, and not only did I find that they mostly have the European version, even though the cases are Australian, but they even had a few of the US copies with Aussie cases. Some even were indeed the N1 patched version. So whether they sold the US version, both the N0 and the N1 version, at retail in Aussie stores, or these were simply just imported from America, I'm not entirely sure. But one thing we do know is that this game is far less elusive than we first thought it was. With that in mind, why is it that nobody's talking about this patched version then? So there is no definitive answer as to why it's so rare. But if I had to truly guess, I imagine it's probably because fans don't want to talk about this game because of how broken it was at launch. I mean, it was really broken. Worse than Sonic 06. Besides, the patch version came out so late, most people only had experiences with the original release. But the only people who would have had it are people that didn't have the game in the first place. And they didn't update you or tell you that it was coming out. It just came out on store shelves. Reselling a cartridge costs a lot of money, so of course people weren't going to know about it. Parents especially wouldn't know about it. Not to mention that the revised version is exclusively on the USA version. I couldn't even find that much information on the developer, Amaze Entertainment. Apparently, Traveller's Tales wanted as many developers as possible to develop all other 10 billion versions of the game, hence they outsourced to Amaze Entertainment to make the shovelware edition for DS and Game Boy Advance. In fact, every subsequent LEGO DS game was actually made by Traveller's Tales themselves. Amaze were responsible for a bunch of ports and licensed games back in the mid-2000s, but none of the games I've looked at show me any kind of history of terrible games or anything like that. Just your typical very mid licensed game. The only thing we can think of as the reason why the DS version was so bad was because of a heavy time crunch. Because they had the Game Boy Advance version, they were working on at the same time, and they also had other games that were working on at the same time as well. There is actually some evidence to corroborate this as well, because apparently the reason why the DS version was rushed to market was because it was supposed to coincide with the release of the original trilogy, episode 4, 5 and 6, on DVD, which those DVDs were released to better line up with the prequel trilogy. Except that was 2004, but then they re-released those DVDs in 2006 with the original Laserdisc version with none of the edits or updates. Why that wasn't in the first one, I don't know. That would explain why it was so broken and terrible at launch, and why they had to issue a patch for it. But why Traveller's Tales and LucasArts even allow Cyberpunk Tatooine Edition to launch in the first place is a complete mystery to me, especially because this game actually had so much potential. Like, yes, it was a licensed game, but man, it was actually kind of fun sometimes, at least from what I've heard. Anyway, back to Amaze. The website is gone, the domain is available to buy, and they merged or were bought out like at least five different times. So trying to keep track of who owns them or what they're doing now is difficult to say the least. That being said, on a different note, Amaze were bought out by Glue Mobile in 2011, who also own Games Buy. From IGN, of all people. That's the equivalent of IGN only Epic Game Services today, is that kind of thing. Game GameSpy basically owned online multiplayer back in the day and, well, Glue oversaw and were ultimately responsible for shutting down all the servers without any warning or any statement. This affected not only the OG Star Wars Battlefront games, but even Nintendo games like Super Smash Bros Brawl and Mario Kart DS and Mario Kart Wii actually. Oh, but it gets even worse because Glue Mobile is now owned by our friends at EA. As if you needed another reason to hate them. Actually, now that I think about it, being owned by EA and making a broken buggy game that barely works at launch is actually very on brand. In the meantime, I do actually want to grab a copy of the game myself now, one that won't destroy my wallet with shipping fees anyway. But until then, look out for Gavin's video who will actually play the games and point out the differences between the N0 and the N1 versions. He also has a lot of backstory and history with the game, so he'll be able to add that to his video. I'll make sure that I reference everything that I researched, or at least everything I could find in the description below. I hope you appreciate all my referencing and whatever you call it, because I'm trying to get a lot better at crediting my sources, so I hope you all appreciate that. Let me know if you have any extra context or if there's anything else I should include in a potential follow-up video. And with that, my dudes, go and watch whatever this video this is. I couldn't be bothered making a proper segue for it. See you there.